In recent years, Slider has unlocked discoveries in the field of archaeology, hydrology, and other Earth sciences. But up until recently, the use of LiDAR to explore the Earth's surface was limited to experts and professionals in the field. But not anymore. Today, I'm going to show you how you can explore the largest LiDAR dataset on the planet, managed by the United States Geological Survey, right now. If you want to follow along with me, just click the link in the description below to open the Equator platform. We recommend using Google Chrome with hardware acceleration turned on. Open the topography menu and make sure that the USGS topographic dataset is selected. You'll see a bunch of polygons on the screen. This is basically a map showing you what areas have been covered by LiDAR by the USGS. Clicking on one of these polygons is going to allow you to bring up the attribute table and learn more about the dataset, including the name and the years when the survey was completed. Today I'm going to be working with the Upper Pit dataset in California, which was collected between 2017 and 2019. Once you click on the dataset, click the View Now button to load the entire point cloud. That dataset has now been added to my layer manager, which I'm going to navigate to now. You can see it listed in the layer manager under the name USGS Point Cloud Preview. Click on that dataset to bring up formatting properties. Formatting the point cloud is probably the best way to understand different features on the Earth's surface. You can do different things like toggling on different classifications of points. So say you're only looking at ground points or building points. And then on top of that, you can change the color and the look of the points to really make different features on the surface pop. For this example, I'm going to turn everything off except for ground points because I want to explore different features of the floodplain in the Pitt River. When you zoom into your site, you're going to want to tweak different parameters like the height range and eye dome lighting so that you can distinguish features on the ground more easily. I'm going to start by turning up the intensity on eye dome lighting to 100, which basically accentuates the shapes of the points and gives it better depth perception. Next, I'm going to adjust the height range, which basically sets the maximum value and the minimum value in the color band. Let me show you what I mean. So if I take a cross section by going to the insert menu and selecting cross section, I can basically draw a line and then click view cross section to see what the ground elevations look like. For this spot, I can see that the elevations vary between at the low end around 1300 meters up to around 1350 meters. So with that information in mind, I can go now to the height range and I can change the min, which is now set to zero, and the max, which is at 2523. I can set it to the min and max from my cross section. So what you can see happened when I did that is it actually changed where that red max elevation color is placed, as well as the min, which is the blue. So if I'm looking for features in the floodplain, what I'm going to do is keep tweaking those min and max values in the height range until the features on the ground surface in that area really pop. So now that I've done this, it's a lot easier to make out different things on the ground, like dams and boulders, different channels, even the roadway. It's almost like having an x-ray of the site. And this is truly an amazing spot to explore. So I think I've probably shown enough for today. I will leave you here and I hope that you enjoy exploring on your own. If you're looking for more information about how you can leverage Equator to extract the data or to turn your data into figures, check out some of the other videos in the links below. Thanks for watching and reach out anytime with questions or if you have suggestions for other videos to make.